Hi everyone, welcome you all. So in this video, I am going to explain about uh, polymorphism in Python. And uh, this polymorphism can be achieved by using overriding and overloading concepts. Now let us see what is a polymorphism in Python. So sometimes uh, an object comes in many types of form, types or forms. So if you have a button, so there are many different draw outputs like a round button, check button, square button or button with some image, but they do share the same logic. So whenever we click on the button, it will do the same thing. And uh, we can access them using the same method. So this idea is basically called as a polymorphism. Means there is one thing can have multiple behavior. So the same thing can behave in different ways based upon the input we provided. So that is the concept of polymorphism. So thus polymorphism can be achieved by using overriding and overloading concept in Python. Now let us see what is method overriding first. So method overriding means uh, overriding can be applied for methods as well as variables. We can override the methods and also we can override the variables. So override basically means having two methods with the same name but doing different tasks. Having two methods with the same name but different tasks. And it means that one of the method overrides the other. Okay, so for example, let me just give you an example here. So for example, I have a class A and also class B. So in, in class A, I have defined uh, one method called as a, for example, let's create a, a display method, right? And the same method I have again created in class B, right? So on the A is extended into class B. Now B is a J class of A. Now when I create the same method, in class B so what we are doing here is we are overriding this method so when I create an object for class B that will execute the method which is created inside the class B and when I call this method from class A and it will execute this from class A okay so this is called method overriding now let us see a few examples on method overriding concept practically so let's me open the PyCharm so here I'm going to create a new Python file I will name it as a polymorphism polymorphism test and uh, click on OK. Now what I can do is simply I will just try to override the variable. So overriding concept can be used for variables as well as method. So in this example, I'm going to show you how to override a variable, how to override a variable. So what I can do is first I will create one parent class, okay, parent. And inside this class, I will create a variable called name is equal to something called as a spot. Okay, this is a simple class which contains a variable. Now, I will create one more class and I will name it as a child class. And this class is extended from parent class. This class is extended from parent class. Now, again, one more time, I will create the same variable here. I will just say, but this time I will provide the different name. Right, so this is a child class. Now I will create an object for child class, let's say child, right? So now what happens is when I call obj dot name, right? When I get a obj dot name and I access this variable and let's print this value, print obj dot name. So what this will print here, we have just created an object variable for child class, right? So child class, we already have the name is equal to David. So even though the child class is extended to the parent class, the current and the latest value of name variable is David. So this should print David. So this should print David. Now let's run this code. Now we will get the David as an output. So that means the latest value whichever we have overridden. So that value will be printed. So for example, in the child class, I haven't implemented anything. I'll just a pass here. And which uh, variable it will call now. So first it will go and verify in the child class. So it doesn't have anything. So obviously it will execute or it will call the parent class variable. Now when I run this, it will give you parent class variable. Right. So this is a small concept of uh, overriding a variable. Overriding a, a variable. Now I will also show you how to override the methods. How to override the methods. Now let's go to with another example. So in this example, I'm going to show you how to override the methods. So let's say again uh, here, I have a class. I will define a class called as a uh, bank. Okay, so this is my bank class. And in this bank class, I will create a method. Let's say rate of interest. Rate of interest. So this is a method I have created. 
so this is the method right right so inside this method i will just return some value let's say i'll return zero right so similarly i will also create one more class and let's say icici and this this particular class is extended from a bank class this class is extended from bank class now what i will do is in this icici bank i will override the whatever method we created in the parent class now let me override this now here the rate of interest will be different let's say 10.5 so now what i have done is i have just created one more child class of the bank and i have just overridden the same method overriding the same method now if you see this in two classes same method we have but it will perform different jobs so here it will return zero here it will return 10.5 same thing and two different functionalities right so this is a polymorphism so let's say i have just created one object right so if i create an object for this class let me just create an object let's say obj okay is equal to i am just creating a object for icici now using this obj when i call a rate of interest method so what this will execute now so it will not just call this method it just return the value it will not uh, uh, print anything right we have to print that returned value so we have to use print function or print method here so now what happens i have just created an object for icici which is a child class now i immediately calling rate of interest method so it will return 10.5 and here 10.5 will be written now when i run this it will give you 10.5 so what does what we have understood based on this is we have just overridden the method as soon as we have overridden the method in the child class we whenever we call this class or whenever we create an object for the child class it will call the latest method okay if sometimes if the latest method is not available then it will go up and call the parent class method okay if this class is if this method is not available then it will go and call the pairing class method it will go and call the pairing class method okay so for example if i want to call specially pairing class method i have to create an object for bank class let's say one more object i am creating obj1 is equal to bank and now you can call this uh, bank class let's say bank and obj1 dot rate of interest so when i call this now it will call the method from the bank class now when i run this it will give you 10.5 okay so this is a, again called as a overriding concept same method we have used again we have overridden in the child class we can create any number of child classes like this and one thing is performing many forms so one thing the same method is performing multiple jobs right so this is a, a kind of overriding concept so we have seen overriding of variable and also overload overriding of methods overriding means same thing same method will recreate in the child class that is called as a overriding concept so with overriding we can also achieve the polymorphism and there is one more concept called as a overloading overloading so by using overloading also we can achieve the polymorphism concept in hoops object oriented programming now i'll show you how to work with the overloading and before that let us see what is overloading so in python you can define a method in such a way that there are multiple ways to call it and given a single method or function we can specify the number of parameters or cell okay so let me just give you one example so for example uh, if i create okay so for example if i create a method let's say i have created add method and here we need to pass some parameters so based upon the number of parameters it will execute on specific method suppose it is taking 1 comma 2 the other method is taking so suppose if i pass 1 comma 2 the same method will do will act uh, something different and if i pass different parameters and the same method will be called and it will act it differently and if i pass different parameters again it will act in again differently same thing will be differently behave based upon the inputs we provided okay this is a kind of overloading concept in python let's see a few examples on this let's go to python one more time i am removing this so here i am going to show you one example for overloading how to overload methods how to overload methods so to demonstrate this what i can do is i will just create one simple class called as a human right so in this class i will create a method called def let's say say hello method say hello method 
and here I will just pass one parameter called as a name. All right. Now here, what I can do is I will assign the default parameter is none. Suppose we can pass the value for the name from the actual method, or if I don't pass anything, it will by default assign the none to this variable. Okay. Now in this method, I will just put one condition. If name is name is not none. Okay, if the name is not none, what I should do now is I should just print. I should just print hello, hello. Just I just print hello. So not none means it contains some name, right? So name is equal to none. I put this is the default variable. Suppose if I pass some name. Suppose if I pass some Scott. So name is equal to Scott. Now here what I'm saying is I'm checking the negative condition. If name is not none, that means there should be some name, right? So here, hello, I will also append something called uh, name, concatenate with the name. So the hello concatenation with the name, whichever we provided here. So this is a one condition I would suppose. If I didn't pass any value for the name, that will be taken by default as a none, right? So here in the else block, in the else block, I will write print just hello, okay? Just hello, I'll print. Now, how it will execute whenever I call this method, if I pass a name to that particular method, so the first condition will become true. So it will print hello along with the name. Suppose if I don't pass anything to this particular method, just it will execute L part. So the same method will behave in two different ways. If I pass a name, it will behave differently. If I pass, if I don't pass a name, then it will differently behave. So let us see how we can uh, call this method. Now this is a class which contains a method I created. Now if I want to call this method, what how we can call? We can just need to create a object for human, right? So let me create obj is equal to human and by using this object, I will just say hello. I'll just call say hello and observe this carefully. So this time I'm not passing any value. This time I'm not passing any value. So what happened now when I don't pass any value by default, the name will be none. None means no value. So what is the condition now if name is not none? That means name is none means the else part will be executed here because when this name is equal to none, if it doesn't pass anything, okay, if I, here I'm not passing anything, right? Anything means the name will be assigned to the none. So if a name is a none, what happened now? It will execute only else block. If name is not none, then it will execute hello along with the name. If the name is none, okay, okay, let me just pass one variable here. Let me just say, I'll pass my variable. I'll pass my name. Observe this now. So I'm not passing the name. What happens now? By default, name value is a none. But if I pass some value, what happens now? Name value becomes power. So now what happens if name is not none? So the first condition if condition will becomes true if the name is not none because name value I'm passing it here. So name is not none now. So then what happens if the name is not none? It will print hello name, right? So when I execute this code, it will print hello power. All right. Suppose same method I will call one more time, but this time I didn't pass any value here. And then what happens if I didn't pass any value? Name will be assigned to the none, though name, then if condition will not match. When this if condition will match, if the name is not none, then it will match. But here we are passing a empty, right? That means it is a none. None means else block will execute. Now this time it will also give you only hello part. So what we understood based on this, the same method will behave in two different way, two different ways. If I pass a parameter, it behaves differently. If I didn't pass any parameter, it different it, it behaves differently, right? So this is a kind of a polymorphism process. Same thing, and the behavior is different. All right. So this is a, a kind of polymorphism. All right. Now I'll show you one more example. This is a one example for overloading methods. Now I'll show you one more example for overloading methods. And here, what we have done is okay. So let me just show you. Uh, again, this is again example for overloading methods overloading methods See now what I can do is I will just create one class called as a bird and In this class I will create a, a function a method. Let's say def fly method 
and here again i'll do the same so self and uh, i'll just uh, i'll pass a bird name here later for now i'm just making as a null okay here i will create one condition if if name is equal to name is equal to right let's say parrot name is equal to parrot if the bird name is equal to parrot what i should do now i will just print here okay i will just print here so parrot cannot fly you can fly so parrot can fly right so i'll just say can fly okay suppose if this condition is false let's uh, write one more condition if suppose name is equal to let's say penguin okay suppose name is equal to penguin so now what happens the spelling is wrong right g u i n right so if the name is penguin this is also bird so if the name is penguin it cannot fly right so i'll just say cannot fly okay now i have two different methods i have suppose if if name is none so suppose if i didn't pass any name for the bird what we should execute it should execute no input it should execute i'll just say no input no input so i have just created a method inside the class the method name is fly which will take one parameter name as a parameter if the name is a parrot then it will print can fly if the name is a penguin it cannot fly if the name is none means if i didn't pass any bird name then finally the last one will be executed right so the same thing same fly method and i will pass different kinds of inputs and different uh, kinds of output we will get now here i will just how we can call this method through this class name so i will just create a object for this bird class right so now using this object i will just call fly method or fly function so see first time i am not passing any parameter now what happens so it will go here if i didn't pass any parameter so name will be assigned to the none by default none means if the name is none what should happen no input is provided so when i run this code no input is there no input and suppose suppose if i pass uh, something called as a parrot let's see parrot now what happens the name will be assigned to the parrot the first condition will becomes true and it should print can fly now let's run this it should print can fly so same method i'm calling by passing different kinds of inputs or parameters and behavior will be different now instead of this i will pass a penguin i'll pass a penguin now when i run this it will give you cannot fly so because the second condition is matched okay so based upon the parameter the behavior is changed behavior is changed the same thing again same method is uh, behaving in different way based upon the inputs we provided so this is the concept of overloading this is a concept of overload so polymorphism in python can be achieved by using either overloading overriding concept and overloading concept so this is all about uh, polymorphism concept in python so that's all for this video thanks for watching please subscribe my channel to get more updates on this thank you all